So first up, what is lithography? Well, if any of you are artists or you might be you might be familiar with the term lithography, that's invented in the 18th century. It's a common technique for printing art, uh, musical scores, uh, different different things, maps. You know, see anything where you have a stone and you kind of um, put the ink on it? That's lithography. So it's derived from Greek. Uh, lithos means stones, and graphy means to write or draw. And then um, images are drawn onto a stone and then transferred onto a substrate like paper or like a t-shirt or something like that. Um, that's litho. But in photolithography, our stones are silicon. Silicon is ideal for doing this. Um, so what's this have to do with um, making computer chips? Why? Uh, so on our side, we use light to draw the image. So light is our, our kind of um, what we use, our pencil. Um, and so that's the photo in photolithography, so to write with light. Um, so the images we draw, um, we make are used to make the basic building blocks of your integrated circuits, your transistors, all of those pieces are made with written light. Okay, so why um, I see in photolithography? So building an integrated circuit or other electronic device is more complicated and not surprisingly. Um, it only gets more and more complicated as we demand more and more out of our devices. Smart cars, uh, your cell phones, all of these things use something that has been um, printed with photolithography. Um, when computers were first designed, ooh, I got this here. Um, when they were first designed with a vacuum tube, okay, that's fine. But then we switched to transistors, um, and the first ones back in 1954 had about 800 transistors. Uh, okay, that's not too complicated. But today, uh, like the phone or the, the computers and things that we use, are much more complicated. Billions and billions of transistors. Our iPhone has roughly nine billion transistors in it, squeezed into that you know thing you can stick in your pocket. So um, in order to all make uh, to make all of those. Uh, you need, each one needs to be independently printed and imaged to make each of the layers. Um, and so think about that, that's millions and millions and millions of processes that have to go through this, this photolithography. Um, and then think about, um, in order to make computers faster, smaller, uh, we have to be able to squeeze more into that small section. And then um, think about what a five megabyte hard drive looked back in 1956. That's a semi-truck that they're pushing that thing into. Um, that's pretty big, uh, but today we have you know the little uh, memory card here, one terabyte. That's a million times more data squeezed into something that we can just hold in our hand. Um, so how do we get there? Well, there's a lot of a lot of it there. Um, fortunately, we can use light to control the size of what we do. So we have some tools that are able to do that. And if we use shorter wavelengths of light, we can make things even smaller. And so um, that's kind of the way that we're going. And as um, we mentioned earlier, we've been pushing light even further. We went from visible all the way now where we're approaching almost x-ray light to do these types of things. 